My name is Chuck Williams. Uh, I'm a product manager at Inflection uh, for our Quantum Cores division. This is Evan Salim, our chief prototype engineer, and we're uh, introducing here at the conference the Desktop Mod, the world's only cold atom platform for education and workforce development. But we've heard a lot of feedback that it could be great for applications development as well. Um, it is a self-contained platform uh, that has a lot of great features, including a, a, a built-in vacuum system, a rubidium atom source, magnetic field gradient, an optics delivery package, a spectroscopy stabilized laser system for cooling and trapping the atoms, and a multi-chapter teaching curriculum uh, for teaching this out of, out of the box lab course. The teaching curriculum, speaking of, comes in two levels, a base level uh, with five chapters where we go over the basics of atomic physics, uh, the, the particulars of the desktop mod system uh, and the, the user manual, optics for atomic physics, experiments with thermal vapor of atoms where we do spectroscopy of, a, of, a, of rubidium. Uh, and then we actually allow the students to create their own magneto optical trap of rubidium atoms, which is what we're showing on screen here and we'll play with here in a minute. Uh, in the advanced system, we get to do really cool experiments like subdoppler cooling, uh, measurement of the expansion of the mod and therefore, uh, which is what Evan's gonna show here in a second, and therefore the temperature, uh, and then uh, observing Faraday rotation in cold atoms, electromagnetically induced transparency. And we've got a whole bunch of in our brain that we haven't put on paper yet. Uh, Robbie and Ramsey spectroscopy, etc. Who is this for? Well, we had multiple people in mind in the education environment. So four-year universities, graduate programs, two-year universities and workforce development, uh, and commercial and defense companies that uh, want to train their folks or do early applications development using cold atoms. Great. So the first experiment that the students would go through in chapter six of our curriculum, just to give you a little bit of orientation, this is the package. Here's the vacuum chamber. The atoms are sitting underneath this orange coil and you can see the atoms on this screen. There's a camera down here looking that way down the throat of the cell. And just to, to convince you that it's real, I, I have a magnet that I can move around and you can see the atoms reacting to me changing the shape of the trap. By the time the, the students have gotten to this point in the curriculum, as Ch Chuck said, we've, we've already given them a little bit of background in, in atomic physics, so kind of a crash course in quantum. We've given a chance to play with optics, get familiar with interacting with light and measuring it. They get a chance to do some experiments with vapors of atoms, do some spectroscopy. We've done laser cooling. They've seen this part of it. They've done kind of qualitative uh, science with feeling how the atoms respond to, to their adjustments. And then a, a, in, as we get into chapter six, we get into more analytic and quantitative uh, assessments of this sample and, and start ma manipulating it. And to, to do that, we have to introduce an element of real time interaction with the atoms. So there's the system has an embedded controller that allows us to program event sequences, which we can then say, load the mod and then turn the mod off and, and send a probe of light to, to capture an image of, of, of the atoms and change a bunch of parameters of the system in a deterministic time varying way. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a mod, I'm gonna turn off the light in the magnetic field and I'm gonna drop the mod. And as it falls, because there's no force acting on other than gravity, it will expand to get bigger. And the, the, the expansion rate I can measure and I can use that to calculate the temperature of my atoms. Um, and so every time I run the experiment, I'll drop a little bit longer each time and I'll send a probe of light through and capture images of the atomic density as a function of position. Part of the learning experience for the students is to get a chance to learn real, real useful laboratory skills. And one of those that we, tar we targeted with this was the ability to start learning to use Python scripts to run useful, meaningful, both you know, experimental controls and analyses. There's a bit of a backbone that we've created to go with this that is basically a bunch of Python libraries that they can pull from. And then they can write an event sequence in this, which is really just a series of very basic commands. Turn the coils on at this time, turn the laser off at this time, trigger the camera here. And so what we'll do is I'm gonna run this cell and you're gonna see the, the cloud form the atoms grow and once I've collected all of them, I turn the I turn the light off and I take a picture. And I send a beam, you can't see it because it's, it's only 20 microseconds long, but I send a pulse of light through and uh, I'll do that four times. So on this screen, you can see, this is the image that, that we capture. There's there's a, a laser beam that's catching a shadow of, of, of the atoms right here. So the atom, the light's resonant, so the atoms basically punch a hole in the beam. 
and we do that twice once with and once without atoms and we get this false this false color image is the density profile of the atoms so and you can see as, as i wait longer and longer the cloud gets bigger and bigger so i can now take that same data and run analysis code on it i can i can fit that that information to say a gaussian profile in this case and i i can now um calculate with with these fit parameters what the size of the cloud is at each of those time steps and fit that to to theory to say as as the cloud expands over this time this slope of this line tells me the temperature so i'm measuring right now 200 and 23 micro kelvin on one axis and 260 micro kelvin on the other and about 23 million atoms in the trap now the students have a, a very quantitative way of interacting with this sample that they can build on to do more in-depth experiences and say how do i change the density how do i change the temperature and then move on to what do i do with the sample once i have it can i probe it with with bichromatic light to, to do coherent population trapping and make a clock do can i you do raman pulses on the light on, on the atoms to split the cloud and do atom interferometry and so there's a there's a whole ho host of, of exploration that becomes possible as an extension of this once we've we've done there once the students have you know finished with the the, the hardware side of it we have a, a further extension which is kind of the unwritten last chapter of our curriculum, which transfers over to the Octant platform where they can log in and access a more advanced state of matter called a Bose-Einstein condensate through a cloud-based web service that basically they program the job that they want they want to see happen on the quantum matter platform and it's submitted and they, they get a data package back when we when we run the job on the on the, the hardware in our labs in Colorado.